Hey everybody, welcome to the final session in our series, The History of Western Swing. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm especially excited about this segment because we get to talk about the current artists and sort of where the genre is headed. So this is a very exciting part for me. Moving right along, that is Jason Roberts there that you see on the screen. So we're going to kind of cover some current artists, a little bit about them, their history, their styles. So as you're listening to them play, think about if you're hearing more of a traditional style or a reimagining or a modernization of the music. That's sort of what we're listening to. And of course, many artists blend both as well. So some points that I want you to think about, the little points to ponder. How do we preserve this music moving forward? What should the main goals and the focus be? And what could Fort Worth do to claim, preserve, and promote our city as Western Swing's birthplace? So be thinking of that as we go along. Okay, so we have heard about these guys for the last couple of weeks, and that's because they've been around. They have been around for 50 years. They just celebrated 50 years. So, yep, they were uh, part of the major resurgence, and they're also part of the current strong trend in Western Spain. So what I was gonna focus on today a little bit, um, something that they've done more in recent years was a ride with Bob. And this was a musical that they wrote. It was based on the life of Bob Wills and the music of Bob Wills. Jason Roberts played Bob Wills. Um, they had a, a lot of wonderful artists, of course, members of the Sleep at the Wheel. They had the Quavy Sisters. A lot of different Western Spain artists were involved. And this was based on, <laughs> I love this, a conversation Ray Benson never had with Bob Wills and ends with a concert. So Billboard said, comes from a Billboard article, Ray said, we had a lot of success with the Wills standard taking back to Tulsa. We went to meet Bob in Dallas in 1973 when he was recording the album for the last time, Benson says. They wheeled him out in a wheelchair and he said he was really tired, we should come back the next day. That night, Bob Wills had a stroke, went into a coma, and died two years later. So we never did get to talk to him. A ride with Bob uses the premise of a surreal meeting on a tour bus to frame what the conversation might have been like. We talk about how we've carried his music on and the disillusionment I've sometimes had in trying to keep it going, Benson says, noting the difficulties both acts faced in reconciling swing and jazz within a resistant country music format. He had the same conflicts we had, but he always stood his ground and got his way because he was Bob. Wills remains the most important figure of his era in Texas culture, Benson says, and he can build a case for that assertion. He brought drums, electric instruments, and Western dress to country music, Benson says. We're just trying to show why people like George Strait are still playing his music. All right, thank you, Ray Benson. So this is a little excerpt I wanted to play y'all. We won't get to watch the whole clip, but this is a part of a ride with Bob, and also they get to talk a little bit with Ray Benson. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. Like it rounds up that old Cherokee maiden now. The reason I did a play about Bob Wills was because when I realized it was his 100th birthday, I realized that this was going to be an opportunity to do just that, commemorate the man's life and music in a play. Deep within my heart lies a melody. He came to me and said, you know, my concept of this from the very beginning has been the conversation that I never really got to have with Bob Wills. I told him the story of me, of me meeting Bob Wills in 1973 and not getting to talk to him because he had a stroke that night. And, and, and Sarah went, well, that's the play. Who the hell are you and what are you doing on my bus? You met me once, don't you remember? Look, I meet a lot of folks, fella. Hey, Jim Bob, Jim Bob, where'd you go? We got some weirdo crazed fan on the bus again. Hey, you said you had a lot of questions to ask me. I figured now might be a good time to give you some of the answers. Bob Wills, pleased to meet you again. 
the ride with Bob is not just, you know, a bus ride to Tulsa. It is, in this case, Ray's understanding of what it means to carry on that musical tradition. How did a Jewish boy from Philly wind up playing Western Swing anyway? Well, I guess the same way that a white farm boy, Hayseed Hillbilly from the West Texas Panhandle got to play in blues and jazz, huh? I am not a hillbilly. There are no hills in West Texas. Ray's in charge yeah. of all the music, and he, uh, he and Ann wrote it, so they have a such a strong... It's something they had in common, came from very different backgrounds and ended up playing a very similar kind of music. So I love, I, I've always wanted to see it. I know, I, I'm sure that they don't have plans to do it again, but I'm sure there's a film or something. They must have, you know, produced a, a film of it. Um, anyhow, if you get the chance to check that out. Okay, moving right along. Oh, no, don't do that. <coughs> okay, the Time Jumpers. Now, this group is based in Nashville, Tennessee, and they started out as, I, I love this phrase, a garage band for fun. So they were really a bunch of professional session musicians um, who are, you know, in the studio 10 to 4 every day, clocking in, playing on all the major top 40 radio kinds of, of, of artists and, and touring artists. And on Monday nights, they would get together at the Station Inn when they started out and just basically have a jam session. So it was all of the top session players and they were very passionate about Western Swing. They really started to build a rapport and build a reputation and they had kind of a wonderful cycle of artists. I mean, everybody from Ranger Doug from Riders in the Sky would play Barry Bales, who's the bass player for Allison Cross and Union Station. Vince Gill played in the band for a time. And then a rotating cast of sit-ins. So you'd get, you know, Allison Cross would walk in and sit in, or Nora Jones would walk in and sing a song. You just never knew who was going to pop in. Um, and they really started to build a following and started writing music and recording. It led to them uh, getting Grammy nominations and awards. They've recorded several albums. So this is a really incredible song. Oh, here it says they had won Best American Root Song for Kid Sister in 2017. So they really started, started something out of what was just a fun side project for all of them. Um, again, here are just some more of the names. Miranda Lambert, Reba McIntyre, Sleep at the Wheel, Willie Nelson. They've recorded with a lot of these artists. And um, nowadays, if you're in Nashville, you can catch the Mondays at 3rd and Lindsley. And so last night was Monday. I remember seeing they posted, they were there. So they're still doing it. If you want to check out thetimejumpers.com, and if you're over that direction, I highly recommend um, going to see them. I lived in Nashville for a while, and you can see maybe here they've got an accordion player named Jeff Taylor, and I was pretty floored and pretty honored at one point to be on his sub list. And so sometimes I got a call, hey Jenny, I can't make it, you want to go play with the time jumpers and, and show up and um, there was Barry on bass or Ranger Dog on guitar. It, it was a really incredible experience getting to play with them. And I learned all the material because I love them so much. All right. So this is what they sound like, and you might notice Vince Gill is singing. about a more of a reimagined or traditional sound, what are y'all really hearing here? 
Yeah, there's no wrong answer. I'm just I'm curious to know what what y'all hear. Um, I don't know. Anybody have ideas at all? It sounds really traditional, really. I mean, they just playing it straight. Yeah, kind of straight ahead. I think that, it, to me, it's got a little like a Lyle Lovett approach or something like Lyle and, it's, and along the Sleep at the Wheel of Lyle vein. To me, um, they do. They have a myriad of ways of playing the music. Some of their stuff sounds really, really straight ahead, and some of it's really boppy. Um, but I was just curious. Thank you for. Sherry, okay, let's see. Okay, the Hot Club at Cat Town. So this is the band that changed my life. <laughs> I met them when I was 14 and decided I wanted to be exactly like them. Okay, so they are Alana James, Whit Smith, and Zach Sapunor. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but he's the newest member. Um, I haven't met him yet, but they, they have had a couple different bass players in the past. Jenny, what happened to Jake? Jake isn't in the band anymore. So J Jake was in the band when I met them, but um, I think that he is based in Austin, but just not playing with them anymore. He's like the best bass player in the He's world. so good. I know he kind of comes from a rockabilly world, so maybe he's more delved back into that. Um, but they have, <laughs> from New England to San Diego to Austin, that's a true story. Um, Whit had, or Alana had put an ad in the paper. They were both in New England. She was just playing a classically trained violinist and she wanted to play fiddle music and she was looking for someone to play with. And Whit answered her ad. So that was how they got going. Because he played Western Swing blues and country and she was just getting going. She, she used to take her friend down into the subways in New York and play the same four fiddle tunes over and over and over and over again because she just learned them and was just dying to play them. So I love, She's a very spunky lady if you get the chance to meet her. Um, their influences here are just all over the place. Um, you can see here, I, I don't know how to say this, this Drupod. Alana at one point had lived in Nepal and studied this, this type of Indian music. So you can hear a lot of influences in their music from Western swing to jazz to the old time fiddle to world music. So they have a lot of beautiful influences. Again, um, when you hear them, kind of think along the lines, like traditional reimagine, what are they doing with it? What I love about them is they're just three people and they sound like a huge band. They really get a lot of sound and it's a lot of what they're doing because Wit on the guitar is playing a lot of, um, you know, nice chunky chords when Alana is singing and playing. And then when he's taking solos, basically the rhythm section becomes a violin and a bass and she's chunking on her fiddle like it's a guitar and creating some walking bass lines and some chords. So they really have a unique way of making themselves sound twice as big as they are. They're also songwriters, so they're kind of reimagining some of the old tunes and also bringing their own music to the genre. What I loved, I was a kid at a Western Swing Festival and they were, you know, about in their early 30s and they were young and fun and they dressed really fashionably and they were just, staying up all night in jam sessions. I thought they were just the coolest cats I'd ever seen. And so I loved, you know, they had this markability and this youth and this this beauty just as beautiful people and, and very handsome and beautiful. And I was so enthralled. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. <laughs>
falls in love with Alana, by the way. <laughs> She's a wonderful gal. Okay, so Jason Roberts, we got to see him a little bit earlier in the Ride with Bob clip. But he's also a youngster. He was born in 1975 and started out really young with a sleep at the wheel. Now I have this kind of funny story about Jason because I think I went to see them one time when I was maybe 16 and it was over at Ado's, and so the biggest sleep at the wheel bus was parked there and I just thought Jason Roberts was the most handsome thing on earth, right? And you know, he, if, if, if I was 16 or so, he had to be like 26, 27. And I'm over there kind of feeling like I'm older and trying to flirt with him. And he looks at me and he's like, well, how are you, young lady? And it was so embarrassing. <laughs> he was just not about to even give me an inch. Like, how are you, young lady? I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm not older. <laughs> anyway, he is a... <laughs> but he is an actual sweetheart of a human being and a wonderful, fantastic vocalist and musician and band leader. So he studied with some of the greats. He uh, really took after Johnny Gimble, got to learn from Johnny Gimble. He played uh, old time fiddle music and he really liked learning Johnny Gimble's solo. So that was kind of how he had gotten started at figuring out how he was going to create his own voice as a swing musician. So Jason currently has a distinction of fronting the, the Bob Wills Texas Playboys project. So it's Bob Wills Texas Playboys under the direction of Jason Roberts. And if you head to the, the Bob Wills Days Festival in Turkey, if you go to the festival this year, the birthplace of Western Swing Festival at National Hall, which takes place in November, his band will be playing. So there is definitely a local opportunity. I know he also comes to town occasionally and plays shows. So if you get a chance to check him out uh, with the Jason Roberts band, he's just fantastic. And um, he does have a lot of respect for the traditional sound, but he, again, brings a lot of youth and energy and kind of a new face and a new vibe to Western Swing. So check him out. All right. Here's some local girls. Have y'all heard of the Quaby Sisters Band? All right, I know some of y'all have for sure. So these gals are from Burleson, Texas. They started out with classical and old time fiddle. And they are this incredible, just sister vocal trio that brings back the sound of the Andrews Sisters. And they're just fabulous. Um, so far in their career, I'm sure the list is twice as long, but Performances with folks like Marty Stewart, Ricky Skaggs, they've recorded and performed with Asleep at the Wheel, with Casey Musgraves, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, Writers in the Sky, the list goes on and on. These gals have the accolades. So again, kind of when you're hearing them, think about that traditional, that reimagined sound um, and, and what you hear there. All right, let's see. Quabies, come along gals. Hey Richmond, we're the Quaby Sisters and we're based down here in Dallas, Texas and we're a western swing band and I gotta tell y'all we have had so much fun getting to play the Richmond Folk Festival over the years and we're excited to play some tunes for y'all today and uh, we're gonna start out with a song that Sophia wrote, what is it? This is uh, the single off of our latest album and it's called My Love, My Life, My Friend. Two, three, four, one.
they are wonderful. But yeah, I think that they have this incredible, they I also evoke Spade Coley to me because of those violin arrangements. They have a really beautifully refined sound. And then of course you can hear the, the influence of the vocal groups. And I think that they're just blending a really nice little modern twist with this throwback to some of the things that we've heard before. Good job, Quabies. All right. I have not officially on a show. We've played several of the same festivals and done plenty of jamming. <laughs> we haven't performed together, but but oh yeah, we all kind of grew up always running into one another. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and do a few highlights here. And I noticed I put a lot of emphasis on women in this session. <laughs> but the last several sessions have had a lot of guys. And I thought, there are some incredible modern women playing this music. So I wanted you all to get a chance to know a little about them. So you can see they're on the keyboards, Emily Gimbel. And you might recognize that last name, right? We heard Johnny Gimbel, who played with Bob Wills. And Emily is his granddaughter. So she is a fantastic musician based in Austin, Texas. And then there's Miss Katie Shore. She's also based in Austin, but she's a Fort Worth girl. She comes from here. There they are. Um, this was taken when they were both members of Asleep at the Wheel at the same time. So yes, Emily comes from this long line of musicians. So Johnny Gimbel and also Dick Gimbel, who's an incredible bass player. She is Western Swing Royalty, and if you get, she's one of the most unique piano players I've heard. She really has a style all her own, incredible jazz musician, and um, just a unique voice as a soloist and a, and a vocalist as well. She's also a composer. Of course, she played with the Sleep at the Wheel, and she tours, uh, I mean, you can see some of these names, Warren Hood, Whit Smith from the Hawk Club of Cowtown. She's had a collaboration with Katie Shore as well. Merle Haggard. So Emily is out there um, just playing music and being incredible. I think she recently got married and is expecting a baby too. So she's building a family, building a, a, a beautiful musical legacy. Way to go, Emily. So Katie, another one of my friends and a fellow female, uh, she's currently in Asleep at the Wheel. And Katie was inspired to play fiddle also in her family. Her grandfather played. Um, of course, she has collaborated with Willie Nelson, George Strait, uh, Ivy Divey, which was Emily Gimbel and Albany Folletta, who now lives in New Orleans. But the list goes on and on for Katie's accomplishments and accolades as well. She's recorded and performed with so many different people. Okay, so I had this incredible opportunity to interview Kristen Harris, and I just wanted to share what I learned about Kristen. So Kristen's based here in DFW as well. She's a vocalist, a songwriter, and musician, and we both kind of grew up in the Cowtown Opry scene <laughs> as well, if any of you were here last week to hear Miss Devin Dawson. So Kristen grew up listening to classic country. She first heard Western Swing at the same, you know, around the same time that I had heard it. We were both very young, and she loved this infectious sound. She just knew she needed to get her hands on an instrument and play it. So some of her influences were the Hot Club at Cowtown, the Time Jumpers, Devin, Bob Wills, Milton Brown, and Asleep at the Wheel. This is an awesome honor for her. At 27, she's the youngest recipient of the WMA Entertainer of the Year, which she won four years in a row. So she is, she is out there recording and performing. Hello. <laughs> All right. So I asked Kristen a few questions. It was a nice, lovely day, and we got the chance to chat. So her proudest accomplishment was that her album won a National Cowboy Museum Award in Oklahoma City. That's a very high honor, especially for such a young person. Um, she said that her very favorite performance, she's like, I loved the chance to play in Europe because she said, I dreamed about it from the time that I started playing music. And it was something I never thought would happen, and then it did. So she said that was certainly a highlight of her life. She's been to France several times and also into Italy to perform. Kristen is a trick writer. So not only is the woman a musician, she's a trick writer. So she was a gymnast from the age of nine, and she noticed that it was just an art form she was always fascinated with, and it was something that she didn't see happening anymore. She always liked a challenge. And she went on Facebook and said, hey, 
anyone know where I can find someone to train me to trick ride? And that's how she found a trainer. So she is a self-proclaimed adrenaline junkie and daredevil. And I, you know, I'd asked her, I said, was the first time that you ever did it, you know, the first time you were landing a move or that you were attempting it, was that scary? And she said, not really, because the relationship with the horse is key. So she said, once you build that relationship, it's like a game of trust. You know, it just lean back and fall and someone catches you. She said that once you build that relationship and you know the trick, you can land it. And she wasn't afraid. So I loved this. Her advice to young women pursuing their passions, whether it's music, whatever it is in life, don't be afraid of your scared feelings. They're normal. Keep doing what you love to do. If you listen to what others tell you to do, you'll get burnout. <laughs> so. Get out there and live your life and not anyone else's. I love that about Kristen. Okay. guys. <laughs> Haley Sanders on the fiddle. Okay. So I'd love to welcome the fellas up. We're actually going to do a concert for you today. <laughs> and then right at the very end, um, if we get a couple minutes, we might chat about those points we wanted to ponder. Okay. So in that video we were just watching of Kristen Harris you might have recognized Nathan Phelps here on the bass. Hello, Nathan. <laughs> All right. Nathan's from Denton, Texas. Okay, if you've been here in the past sessions, you might recognize my brother Glenn McLaughlin on guitar. <laughs> Okay, and over here on the fiddle, this is Mr. Jess Mitter. Are you from Decatur? From, from, okay. Decatur, Texas. We've got Fort Worth, Denton, and Decatur representing here. So we've all been playing music together for quite some time. Jess and I met in the Cowtown Aubrey. Jess was, I think you were nine, and I was 16. So we've been playing music since we were literally kids. Um, and then Nathan and I met maybe about 13 or 14 years ago, and we've been playing music together. So all of us, all of us um, have played music for quite some time together. Okay. So we're going to mix it up. We're going to do um, some traditional stuff, some original stuff. Give you guys a little feel of a mini Western Swing concert. Let's take it away, boys. Keep <laughs> Charlie. Mom, a two. Oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm not the music 
Some folks call her Diana Stole my heart away from me Laid down in Lucy 
again up. Oh, take me back to Tulsa. I'm too young to marry. Take me back to Tulsa. I'm too young to marry. All the little bee sucks the blossom while the big bee gets the honey. And the poor man raises the cup while that rich man takes the money. Oh, take me back to Tulsa. I'm too young to marry. Take me back to Tulsa. I'm too young to marry.
clinging closer all the time to the years and the tears just the same. I got that old fashioned faith in my heart, and nothing can tear us apart. Darling, we turn to see, but there be no change in me. I got that old fashioned love in my heart. Darling, we turn to see. Ain't no change in me Got that old-fashioned love in my home The two of us know Just kind of get short and sweet We'll start right on the top without the drone Cool Key of D Dog The Snowflake Reel Alright, I'm going to try my hand at a fiddle song <laughs> One, two, three, four
days are made to be happy. Hey, my days are so blue and they're filled with regrets. So, someday, sweetheart, think it over. When storm clouds are gray or in the sky, remember you know you had needed your soul. But I didn't realize, oh no, no, no. So much again thanks to Jess Metter, Gwen McLaughlin, and Nathan Phelps. That concludes the history of Western Swing. We might have another minute or two if y'all had any questions for us or anything you'd like to add in, but thank you so much for being part of this series. It was such a pleasure and thank you to the library for having us. This has been such a joy. <laughs> <Yes, gentlemen. laughs>